Lord to go open our worship service with the use of him 595. 595. Rescue the perishing. Let us sing this song with enthusiasm and love. <laughs> thy place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. Amen. Amen. May God bless this reading. Let us strengthen our hearts. Let's pray. Let us kneel. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're thankful for this worship service. We're thankful for the Holy Sabbath day. And most of all, we're thankful that Jesus Christ, our Savior, has died for each one of us. We're thankful that he loved us beyond measure, in infinite measure. Lord, we realize that we are sinners. We are lost, but we're reaching out to you. We need strength, we need faith, we need courage in these closing hours of Earth's history. We're thankful that we can worship today in freedom, while freedom still lasts. Guide us, strengthen us, let your Holy Spirit be present today in everything that we see, everything that we hear. May prove a blessing to us, and it will strengthen us, and that we will have a closer connection with you. Be with those who are sick. Lord, lay your healing hand upon them, and if it's your will, restore them to health. As the apostles performed many miracles, and wherever they went, and there was healing, 
Wherever Jesus went, it was healing. And Lord, we need a spiritual healing, that our lives will be transformed, and that we will, rec that we will resemble Jesus more and more in character. Bless us, forgive us our sins, cleanse us, and prepare us for that wonderful day when Jesus comes back with the angelic host, and that he's going to raise those who have died in the faith. And now bless us, and we pray this in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. 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 Well, we're thankful that we have another Sabbath day. And we have a little mini conference here. People have come from different places. And uh, I welcome all of you, each one of us. May God richly value you with the Holy Spirit and that we will be happy Christians, not with long faces and happy that Brother Joel Bernardo could be in our midst from Southern California, from the Huntington Park Church, and Sister Shoni, she has traveled also for an hour and a half. They have visited us also from uh, Fresno. I've come a long distance. It's about a three hour trip, and we're happy that you were able to come. And I spoke to them a little bit before. May, may, this, may this little church here, which we use here, the small class, will be something very special you know, in, our, in our hearts. It's, where we gather, where there's one or two, God will meet with us. So be happy in the Lord, trust in God, and follow what is right. We all know what is right, and we need to follow what is right, and then we will be richly blessed. Uh, just a few announcements. I'll ask Brother Christian Nelson if he has some announcements, and then also Brother um, David Moreno, he has other announcements. Brother. Yeah, for local announcements, uh, everybody's welcome to stay. We have a potluck today yes, yes. afterwards, and we'll have afternoon meetings as well uh, today. Um, there'll be a youth time in the afternoon, and so this this Sabbath day is a day of fellowship and worship and praise with each other to our Lord. And so everybody's welcome to stay and be, be a part of that all day long. Tomorrow morning we'll have a baptism at a, uh, at a hotel in Elk Grove, so uh, the address will be given out later this afternoon, too. Uh, but all are invited to join us for that as well. Um, Sister Annie from Fresno will be, Lord willing, be baptized tomorrow morning. Um, tomorrow we'll also have a meeting, and afterwards we'll be passing out literature tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday nights we meet here for prayer meeting. Uh, we meet at 6.30, have a light supper from 7 to and we meet from 7 to 8. Light supper starts at 6.30. And all are welcome and encouraged to to join us for that too, Wednesday evenings. Uh, if you are not able to join us for prayer meeting or for service, you can call in on the telephone and listen and partake. Now you can join us and partake in the weekly prayer meeting. Um, and on Sabbath, you can just join and listen and not partake. Uh, but yeah, those are announcements for the local church. <laughs> David Marino, you have an announcement also. Uh, yes. Please come here. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> Amen. A little too. Yeah, thank you. Praise the Lord that it is a happy Sabbath, not just Sabbath. Um, I think in a couple announcements in, for this afternoon and with this little mini conference we have. We'll be having a youth service after lunch. Now I'm going to get together. Brother Gadiel was, was trying to come, but unfortunately he's not able to be present as the, the youth fee, uh, Western Field Director of the, the Young de Youth Department. Uh, he's not here, but I'll just represent the youth, and I'll get together with the two youth leaders for the local church, and we'll, we'll devise something for the afternoon. Then after that, we will have a song and praise service with Sister Ami, and then we'll have a health topic with Brother Emil. So... This afternoon we'll be having all the services. But what I really wanted to announce was that the uh, Western Field has set dates for a Western Field conference. Now, the dates are March 8th through 10th. So we have one month to, uh, to be able to prepare. We decided this because of the campground. We have um, been able to get a hold of Leone Meadows, which some of you have, are familiar with. And the, uh, the pricing was, was very, very reasonable and economical. So because of that, we know that you know, some of our members are in need and we don't want to put such a big burden. So we decided to, to accept this campground 
because not only is it beautiful, I remember the food was very excellent as well, and the pricing was just uh, was really too good to pass up on. So we did announce, we're announcing that it's going to be March 8th through the 10th. Um, the directions we're going to be sharing with uh, the leaders of each individual church so we can get all the instructions there. Registration can also be done online, so you, each family can go online and reserve their, their own um, um, their cabin or lodge. Um, and let's see what other details should we talk about. There. It will just it'll be a conference for just Friday, Sabbath, and Sunday. So we'll be arriving there in the, the uh, evening. We'll have um, open the Sabbath and then have uh, dinner and continue and begin the conference that way. And then we'll end with uh, Sunday breakfast. We'll have a closing service. And, you know, just have a, a small conference where everybody can be together and enjoy God's creation in, up in the mountains. Um, so if you have any specific de details or questions that you may at, need, um, we'll, we're going to try to give all this information to the local leadership. And if they have questions, they can direct it to us. Um, and the website is very, very, very easy to navigate and it has all the information there. And it is very important that, that we follow their instructions how to get to the campground and not follow like Google Maps or whatever map or GPS system. They say specifically some of those services can take make you drive another two hours extra. <laughs> so unless you really want to take the scenic route, please follow their instructions okay. and then we'll follow the Yeah, the whole system. area burned. Yeah, a lot of the so area burned, so it's not as beautiful as I remember it to be, but um, their campground was preserved by God's grace. It is actually an Adventist mm -hmm. campground, so they are familiar with that, that, you know, what we follow. Um, yeah. Although they weren't familiar with us specifically, at least the two individuals I spoke to. So the Lord help us to be a witness to them as well and bring more and more souls to Jesus as you know, the topic will be discussed. If you have any questions, you could ask me or, or, or the leadership here locally all the information. And the registration, can, it will begin tomorrow morning. It will be active so everybody can, continue, can begin to register themselves for this conference. From here to Beoni Meadows will take you one and a half hours to travel there. It's a beautiful place up in the mountains. Um, children's story. We're all children. <laughs> Whenever we left the room without the lamb, what do you think happened? 
That <laughs> lamb cried, <laughs> not with tears, but mad, mad. It was so heart wrenching. And I think about that many times when I read through the Psalm 23 that He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, because that lamb so imprinted on us that it would follow us to the ends of the earth. I remember one time we took it to a park, and it was so nice because I've taken dogs to a park, and the dog, you know, you get on the leash, and for a while, you know, you're just pulling, getting pulled by that dog. But the lamb, we didn't need a leash. We didn't need anything. That lamb, right with us, right there. And it was really nice until the day when we had to separate from the lamb. <laughs> that was not easy. That lamb cried and cried until it was actually a horse. Um, and still, when my son Michael comes to visit sometimes, he has to keep his voice a little low because the lamb will <laughs> kind of recognize him for a while. So it's the same way that we can follow the Lord. You know, be constantly aware of his presence. We, we can learn so much from looking at the nature that he surrounded us with. And if you ever get a chance to take care of a lamb, do it. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Just a little bit. Can we for offerings? I think and afterwards, Brother Joe Bernardo has a special song he would like to share with us. So, Brother Andrew.
I would like to thank the Lord. We were so excited. We created a plan. I've been through my co-worker, Elder David. We have a good team. And every day we talk. With Brother David, when I have some thoughts of how to come here, when to start coming here, we have created four Sabbath conferences. Aside from the big conference in uh, Rione Meadows. And from here, this is our first conference, a Sabbath conference, we call it. And we will always be together. And also, we'll go to Utah. We have uh, brethren there. And we have also in Arizona. And also, we will go to San Jose. And so, it's a, uh, Sister Ruth is our secretary. She is a very good secretary. We have Sister Marisol from Riverside. One, everything that we say, everything is in the minutes of the meeting. And we, we are so excited that I can see you all. I'm so happy also. Yesterday, Sister Shoni told me she has a friend. And I asked her, please, bring her. And I prayed. And, and she is here now. And it's a wonderful thing, you know, when God answers your prayer, you, are, you really can have a happy face and joyful heart. That shows God is with us, Emmanuel. And this is wonderful. My topic today is uh, uh, long ropes and strong stakes. That means to say it for the comfort, <laughs> you know. And uh, it says here, enlarge the place of the tent that shows we don't focus on only our family. Sometimes people have big lot, 20 acres, but they never look at the outside of the boundary. They only think of themselves. And this is not what the Isaiah, Isaiah had uh, encouraged us, enlarge the place of the tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation, spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. You know, thy wor these words are directed to the church. This is our mission, my dear brothers and sisters. God did not create you to become good looking just to, to praise yourself. If you're good looking, maybe you are smiling. Your smile can penetrate the dark. You know, the neighbors, they're lonely. Lots of them are separated. They don't know what to do. They don't know who will even hug, give them a hug. You know, they have discovered that when somebody is being hugged, they prolong their life. They lengthen their life heart to heart with a good hug. We always hug with our in Huntington Park, and I sent that uh, picture, video to the other, to the Baptist people, and they said, that's the old ways before. People come home to their homes happy because they receive a handshake. Not a political handshake, you know, where you want people to vote for you. But it's something that they can feel inside them. Somebody cares. Somebody gave me food that I never tasted before. So this message, enlarge the place of the tent, is 
a message to each one of us, to churches, and to the ministers. Imagine if next Sabbath you try to, you have six days to invite people. Next Sabbath we will enlarge our building. But sometimes empty seats, why? People, they don't have time for their visitor. They have no talk, a short talk. Sometimes one little conversation can touch the hearts. You know, where we live, we are, we are strangers in L.A. But every time we are, when we go out of the gate, our neighbors open the gate for us. When they come, we I open the gate for my neighbor. When they cannot throw their garbage, I say, don't worry. I'm too big to help you. I do it for you. Oh, now, when my wife cooks something, they smell it. They say, Ami, you. So my wife brings. It's like, and they bring us all those guava, everything that their plants. I said, Thank you, Ami. You have helped me to enlarge our family. You know? And so, also, to the ministers of the gospel, you don't spend, spend time preaching, preaching. What will happen to you? That's theoretical. You need to preach with your life. Preach with your smile. And so, this is important. We need, God is calling us today for wider vision. When Jesus made a, 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 a plan, it was from the beginning. Even before the creation of the world, Christ was slain before the foundation. They have a plan even before the fall of humanity. A long-range plan that it ends up in the book of Revelation. You know, that the, the message of uh, Revelation is an open door that everyone will be there. And the Bible says in Isaiah 66, verse 22 and 23, and, and, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come and worship in New Jerusalem. God gave hope to everyone. We don't talk to people and judge them because of their religion. The reason why they are, they are connected with other religion, because maybe we stayed at home. We did not do anything. So today, I would like to, to encourage one. I'm not preaching to you all, but I want you to have a wider vision and a more amplified of view. That means to say, it, it will reach out. You, you have a vision that you, you know exactly what, what you will do that day. And so, why? Because we want to make room for new converts to God's truth. Last night we were only few in numbers, but now I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked that there are so many people. It was just right that we made a, a conference here. You know, it's not the multitude of uh, visitors, but it is the joy that we can be together. That is important for me, that you support me and David. And that you love us, my dear brothers and sisters. So God calls, indicates that the church's vision of evangelization was far too narrow. And the outlook too pessimistic. People say, oh, there are people like to find God in the Google. Oh, we, they don't need our literature. Google. Yeah, but people who want to buy banana, they don't go to Google. They, they go to the market, you know, and the people needs, a housewife needs to go out of her, her home and her room and to meet people. This is very important. So today, what was the message of that? Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them, let them stretch for the corte. So during the time of Abraham, so when you extend the corte, more visitors can be accommodated. You know, they sit down together in the fireplace and they drink milk together. Maybe they have a special cheese that they share because we were not created to be an island. No man is an island. 
So God's message today is very wonderful. What is true of the church is true of its ministers. Why? Many ministers are preoccupied with the cares of this life. You know, they only think that they are the one right. We are the one right. The members are hypnotized. Oh, my pastor don't believe that. My pastor said Sabbath is not true. It's Sunday. And so everyone, instead of opening the Bible, is stretched forth thy tent. Also, is applicable to the Bible. Show the people that God is the head of the church. And he has the authority. It's the Holy Spirit. When Jesus promised the disciples, when, the, when I need to go away, I will send the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. Into all truth. So God's remnant church in the last days will have complete truth. Complete truth. They know what is sin. They know how to be forgiven. God, the people will know that Jesus cannot bless if we individually choose to transgress the law of God. The Bible says, he that say, I know him and keep it not his commandments. He's a liar and the truth is not in him. So, Lord, there are so many honest people praying to the Lord. Lord, every day I, I read the Sabbath, Sabbath. But when I go to my pastor, they said, no Sabbath is crucified in the cross. My dear brothers and sisters, you have not seen a cross with the Ten Commandments crucified on you. There is nothing. So... We need to be intellectually be settled in the truth. Every member to be baptized in the church must know exactly how to explain his personal experience why he had decided to follow Jesus. But the problem is if we don't make an experience with God and we meet people, we don't know what to say. Oh, I need my pastor. I think I need to call my pastor. Talk to my pastor, my dear brothers and sisters. Isaiah is saying, let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not. Lengthen thy cord. So, this text is for comfort. Acquainted with tents uh, recognizes the figure. When you pitch a tent, if you lengthen the ropes, you must strengthen the stakes. Uh, that means to say increase extension scope for increase stability. So this is important. Not when you're offended by a sermon. I don't want to come back next Sabbath. I thought they were all angels. But now, why did that person? Imagine if everyone will go away because of somebody hurts them. No, we must strengthen our stakes that we can be founded upon a better ground, the rock of the ages. Sister Annie, she has been a missionary in the university. She was doing corporate work, and that's why we understand the language we talk. I asked her this morning, why did you decide to be baptized tomorrow? She knows the different Adventist group, reform group, but she said, I just choose because they have the truth. You have the truth, and that made me sleep for an extra hour this morning. <laughs> you know, because it's very hard. You don't know what's going on in the minds, why they want to be baptized. But my dear brothers and sisters, uh, we need a wider vision, more amplitude of view. That means that before both the church and the minister of the gospel can do effective soul winning, their vision of the inclusiveness of God's program of soul winning is imperative. The gospel commission with Jesus. Go to Jerusalem, then what's next? Judea. Judea, then? Samaria. Samaria, then? So it, it means to say, Jesus says, there's no stone here in this Jerusalem that will be left. Don't stay there. The message is 
uh, on the year 70, the Roman soldier general will destroy this city. And now, every local church, every family church is the center of the world. This is important. We are in the higher level of organization, but the local church is more higher because we need to ask permission. We'll go there. Uh, can you help us prepare food? So we need to have an imperative. We must follow the plan of Jesus Christ. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. No matter they're Mormons, they're Baptists. I was writing something last this morning. Come close to your neighbor. I know sister is a friend of your neighbor, you know. So sympathize with them. Don't look at them through your eyes because you will be judging them. Look in them through the eyes of Jesus Christ. You know, he will spend his time with them. Not Republican, but public. You know, publicans and sinners. If you are there and looking at Jesus sitting with the mayor, what will you do? Will you get upset? Will you disfellowship the pastor or change the pastor? Pray for them. What's for opportunities to do them good? Help where help is needed. I know of uh, the mother-in-law of my son. She is a charismatic uh, And I said, what, she, what do you do on Sunday? I go to 20 houses of poor Filipinos and ask, I ask the old people, do you need help? Do you need bread? Do you need soap? Write it in paper and I, I will go to the market for you. Because some children, they abandon their parents. They never visited them in the nursing home. And so this Filipina lady who is 17 years old with her car, she has all the list. Grandma and this store that I did. And you know, every Sunday she has 75 people receiving Bible study. And that are the old people. Sometimes we want to have a good sermon to look good as a pastor. My dear brothers and sisters, there are those all around you who have woos, who need words of sympathy. They want to hear love and tenderness and heed our humble, pitying prayers. One time a Baptist pastor told me, can I pray for you? And he knelt down and I kneeled down and I said, Your prayer is powerful. And we became good friends. You know, uh, some are suffering under the iron hand of poverty. They are so poor, they don't have even a bicycle. And you have a bicycle at the back, maybe eight. Why not repair it, put air, and says to the family, can we donate it to your son because I saw him walking. What do you think the parents will talk during the dinner time? On the dinner table? They will say, oh, we thought that those Filipinos are not friendly. They are friendly. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that will be a seed sown in the hearts of the people who will never be converted by your preaching, but by practical Christian. You know, and some are suffering, some are sick, and others with heart aches and gloom. I baptized somebody in 2017. And now she called me, Sister Joy, the doctor told me stage four cancer. I'm sick. What shall I do? I cannot tell her, because you eat in between meals, or because you, you mix fruits and vegetables, you know, I just listen until the end. And in the middle of the night, morning, two o'clock, I texted her, God is our precious. And the next morning she said, 
it grieves my heart. Because if cancer is like, you cannot explain it. Why? But God permits things when you are tested. You learn according to the job and his proverb. If you want to reach heaven, you must. You need to walk by your knees. You become so connected with God. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, we must meet first the temporal necessities of the needy and relieve their physical wants and suffering, and you will find an open avenue to their hearts where you may plant the good seed of religion. So this is wonderful. Sometimes I'm jealous with Jesus. 5,000 people run after him. Is there a pastor that the, the members are running for? Follow the pastor now? Oh, they are afraid. Oh, pastor, I don't have time. Maybe you can just give me a, a short prayer. Goodbye, pastor. But in the time of Jesus, everybody, he showed love and sympathy to the people. And he called them. And he followed them. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, approach the people in a kindly manner, full of cheerfulness and love for Christ. You know, we cannot talk about Armageddon all the time. Or the signs of the times or the flood. They knew that already. They saw that in the television. Flood in the Philippines. Earthquake in Japan. Tornado, flood in Saudi Arabia. I think that's not the right approach to begin. But approach the people with cheerfulness. And the love of Christ manifested in your word and your act will win its way to the soul when the re reiteration of precept or arguments would accomplish nothing. This is, I, I'm learning every day. I was preaching one time in Denver, Colorado, and every, 10 people left. And I was only, I was young before. It was 20 years ago. I said, where did I commit a mistake? <clears throat> After one month, they came back. And I hugged them. And I said, there. I said, do you have any question? Yes. We want to know if this is a Christian church. I said, why? Because we heard only you talking about white. White. Who is that white? Then I said, then I said well, <coughs> then I preached that Sabbath and I spoke about the love of God, about Christ, Leaving the, the solar system and all the beauty of the angels and came down and become incarnated and became a man. And he was tempted in all points like me and you. And he came here to save us because he's the way, the truth, and the life. And then they stayed there. And some of them are baptized. You know, it's wonderful, my dear brothers and sisters that we can talk about bringing people to Christ the healer, Christ the Savior, Jesus the Messiah, and Jesus your King, Jesus your High Priest, when you are so fallen in sin that every finger is pointing on you, but Jesus, His hands are stretched out still. It gives you hope Oh, my dear brothers, show heartfelt sympathy for the poor, for the suffering, struggling souls who so overtaken in fault, sinning and tempted and discouraged. A lot of people, they knew that they cannot come back to church because of what their history Maybe everyone knows that he committed a mistake that can that is irreparable. My dear brothers and sisters, if Jesus was there, he would say, Come, like Mary Magdalene, the woman in Jacob's well, the man 
who was possessed with devils. And Jesus told them, go home to your house and tell them what happened. You know, I'm so happy with the Bible text. It says that my thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, there will be thousands in heaven. We will meet whom we thought they were in a wrong religion. Maybe we thought that they are not, they were never became a members of the church, but they will be members of the great multitude who will meet God. Visit those who live near you and by sympathy and kindness seek to reach their hearts. Be sure to work in a way that will remove prejudice instead of creating it. And remember that those who know the truth for this time and yet confine their efforts to their own congregation and their own churches, refusing to work for their unconverted neighbors will be called in account for the unfulfilled duties. When my father was young, he was a Catholic with a gun, but then he became a Seventh-day Adventist. And then my father said, I will look for my sister. And then my sister was a Catholic who kneeled down before the altar, and my father warned her. Before starting with other people, why not look for your sister, you know, or your sister? And then when we became a reformer, my father said, how can I talk to my sister that I had a new found faith and my sister was converted again. My sister said, another? Another transfer? My father said, no, you don't transfer. But with the same message of hope. And my, sister, my auntie died and she has 11 children. And now the, the 11 children became leaders of our church today. Amen. And God gave a gift to the children that they can play violin like a German. <laughs> a German girl. And when you listen to them with the bandi, 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 banjo, banjo wow, I said, they're professional. They are your niece and nephews. You know, God, when you have a gift, the Lord develop it with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody dies, the neighbor said, can you send the children who plays that wonderful mm -hmm. music? Music can melt the heart. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, do not wait for the people to hunt for up the shepherd, but they're waiting for you. Maybe they are looking at you. They have a nice car. Where are they going? Oh, it's Sabbath today. They have a Bible study or a Sabbath school lesson. And they said, why they even don't commit a mistake of even inviting us? Because our grandma was also an Adventist. Many people will blame us. We know too much the truth. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, there are three important steps in reaching out to people. I'm not teaching you to do it. This is just a part of my sermon. Mm -hmm. by, by bringing them maybe a steps to Christ. I've seen a lot of pamphlets there. Steps to Christ. Give to the people. If you are a non-believer, non-Adventist, you read the steps to Christ, you fall in love with Jesus. And when you fall in love with Jesus, you fall in love with your neighbor. That you say, oh, really? Jesus spent more time on healing than preaching. By praying with the people, people respond to prayer. By opening to them the scriptures, you know, it's not by your own smartness because you can answer, no. But by the Spirit of God as a living that when they like you, when they are impressed with your life, you're so kind to them. Maybe during their birthday you come with a nice cake and a nice flower and your neighbor is separated or divorced. When you go home, they cannot even explain. Why did they do that? 
they are they are being prepared by the Holy Spirit because God listens to all prayers no matter what religion you are because the, we have only one Father in heaven. So what we want is the tender sympathy of Jesus Christ. And then we can melt our way right into their hearts. <clears throat> We want to float ourselves, not in pomposity. When you come to the poor people with the noise, they don't want you. I learned from Brother, Brother Oscar Valles. When we went to Hawaii for one month or uh, 15 days, <coughs> door to door, he said, don't dress so good. <laughs> dress the Hawaiian like uh, my, my dear Brother Art <laughs> with flowers. <laughs> And then you identify yourself with the people. And whenever I walk there, I said, Filipino? I said, yes. Are you Filipino? I said, yes. I said, do you have rice? I said, are you you're hungry? I said, and eggs also. And they prepare food for me. <laughs> but if I go here, he says, oh, we have our own minister. Thank you. We're going to church now. Jesus did not have anything, no pillow, nothing, simple, but he was effective. Also, this is important. We want to clothe ourselves not with pomposity, but a plain, simple dress so that they will feel that we are unequal with them and as though we consider that they were worth saving. Beautiful. Today, begin to talk courage. When you, when people, you know, so many times we, we complain, <coughs> and the people tell you, I thought you had Jesus. Why you are so discouraged? I thought you keep the Sabbath. But you have the Sabbath, but as if you don't, you're not alive. You're like dead. You're complaining about your sickness, your daughter's sickness, and then sickness. Do you have Jesus? So, do not utter word, despondent word. For such words, please, Satan. Talk of Christ. Talk of Christ's goodness. And tell of his power. Words of hope. And trust and courage. Sometimes you meet somebody who is so depressed. Maybe the husband had beaten her, or she beaten her husband. Don't try to give counsel. Just listen. Afterwards, yeah. the problem with us, we don't have time to listen because we thought we know the whole Bible. We know the spirit of prophecy. We have all the rights to answer all questions. Sometimes silence is eloquent. Sometimes it's just emote. Sometimes. Yeah? So my dear brothers, present Christ by the fireside. Tell of, of his own power. And in closing, how do we reach out? I listed this morning as I came here at the back. And if you like it, just write what you like. Don't write what you don't like. Consistent Christian living. This is very important. That what you say can be seen and can be felt by others even without talking. Being a good neighbor is also important. If you don't, you know, I, I planted in my garden a sweet potato because that is our specialty. The leaf, the young leaves of the sweet potato, when you put uh, a coconut milk and then put garlic and onions and ginger and boil for 15 minutes and hot rice. That is the food of every boxer in the Philippines. <laughs> we are the champion to the whole world. Our boxer is only five, six, but he defeated every American, everyone. <laughs> he eats only the sweet potato. Yeah, if you want to be, try it. Yeah? 
So that's why being a good neighbor is wonderful. Literature sharing. You know, don't let that stand here for a long time. Give to them. Tomorrow we will have an opportunity to do it. Give Bible evangelism. That is readable. No? That's more. <laughs> They are looking to a germs. No. <laughs> they want a Bible that is readable. And also a neighbor Bible club. When you invite your uh, no, question and answer. So this is important. Also, I think friendship team. When you walk, walking, sometimes you, you develop friendship in the park when you're walking every day. Until you, how are you? You were not here yesterday. What happened to you? I have a gift for you. <coughs> so this is also important. Friendship team. Community service. This is also important. Help class. Cooking demo. You know, simple. You get a plantain. A hot, a not so right plantain. Cut it. Put, cut it. Put a egg roll cover, and then put a little sugar, fry it. Mm -hmm. Only abnormal people will not, like, <laughs> will not like it. But if you're normal, you will, you will grab three to four. Because you're afraid that they, your, your friend might eat it all. This is important. Temperance program. Simple natural treatments, herbal and everything. Music ministry. I cannot preach without singing. It's because music inspires me. And so, so other people. You know, why do you think God entrusted to the disciple with the same character like us? Entrusted the evangelization of the whole world through a very weak uh, sensitive, poor disciples because if we permit God to work in our hearts, God can still develop young people who will stand like Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego. <laughs> and so my dear brothers and sisters, may God help all of us. We have a, a responsibility to reach every individual in your territories. This is not a duty, my dear brothers and sisters. This is a privilege. You know, I'm so happy I'm missionary at the age of 67. Some people, I talked about it there, but you let me go home. I need to reach, retire on this side. Let the young people. I said, I'm preparing David. He will be my Joshua. You can continue. They said, he said, no. We need you until you die. <laughs> that was, uh, I, thought, I think, I think it was an insult. Was it uh, uh, compliments or anything? Uh, but I'm so happy. Sometimes I write my sermon 30 minutes before I preach. Because I'm a comforter. A comforter look at you and they need they they know that one day if I show you my book you will grab it and pay for it. Comforter ten minutes is enough for me to know what you feel inside. And I am the solution. Jesus is our solution. May God bless us. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank Brother Bernardo for his service. What was his title? Rescue the Perishing. We have a responsibility before the Lord. Go teach and walk baptize. So I hope that each one of us will be involved in seeking for the lost, leading people to Jesus Christ. This is our main mission that God has entrusted each one of us. Nothing more, nothing less. Just, may God help us in the coming days, 2024. Uh, we're going to sing now in 369. 369. <coughs>
yourself to the poor, to the hopeless, to the sinners as we are. Thank you, Jesus, that when you came here, you did not have a big house. You did not have anything, but you had the love of your Father. Help us, Lord, to reflect your humbleness, your kindness, also the joy of seeing souls, even sinners or who think themselves hopeless. They found joy, security in Christ. Lord, thank you for giving us the privilege to know all this wonderful truth. We want, Lord, that the Holy Spirit may be worked in our hearts, that we ourselves can experience the real joy of salvation, so we can also share to others. Lord, we owe people an explanation of the wonderful truth revealed in the Bible. People have put their trust in their pastors, in their organization, but help us to realize, Lord, that it is you that is the head of the church that has the last word. Bless, I pray, Lord, for every young person that are kneeling down in this very moment, that they can also be joyful to know that God, when they open their hearts, God will give them the opportunity to also know how to share our faith. Bless everyone. Bless also Pastor Henry Berry, whom I have learned a lot from him by working with him for a long time in different parts of the world, that help us to be kind, help us to be loving. I also pray, Lord, that we can see our sister, sister Sandy standing before us, praying that Diana Continue, Lord, to be with her. You know her sacrifice. You know how she wants to educate the people for eternity. Help that this small cloud will still, and that the cloud will become bigger and bigger until people will say, this is where I met Jesus. So as I leave, we say amen to all the, our requests. Bless Sister Myra, that you can give her hope. You know how she has decided to follow you. But help, Lord. Put a shame the devil and help us, Lord, because you are a God who was victorious against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. So bless us today. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Service 342. 342. unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will bless them. 